What is up everyone? Welcome to another weekly news video. We'll jump straight into things today. The first thing I want to quickly touch on is a mini recap of the hobby censorship video that I put out about four or five days ago now, where we spoke about, you know, some of the issues on the blowout forums. Now, I'm not going to repeat myself, but essentially the gist of the whole conversation was that you've basically had threads calling out, um, you know, the likes of Jeff Wilson, Ken Golden, and some other hobby elite threads and posts being deleted by the admin of, of blowout because they appear to be, you know, a little bit negative or they were, you know, calling out some of these guys. And it's sort of, made a bit of a crap storm to be honest because the things that were being you know called out by these individuals weren't really negative and they were sort of um you know being you know judged off the back of certain you know rules within their forum that didn't really appear to line up with what these people were doing right so this is off the back of the individual mind cycle cards putting out a video questioning some of the purchases that jeff had made and they sort of banned him off the back of you know self-promotion when in reality he was just holding you know, somebody who calls himself an investor accountable, right, for the things that they were saying. A few more people have come forward and basically said, you know what, this is also happening in other areas, what's sort of going on blowout. And the general gist of the conversation is, and I've said that already, is that you've got these, you know, trusted platforms, which is what blowout forums was for so many people within the hobby for the last at least two decades, where they would go there to get information. And now that they're going back and, you know, scrubbing things and deleting things that could be you know, judged to be them protecting sponsorships, perhaps all this sort of stuff, you know, raises things into question and goes, well, who can you trust? And the thing I want to put you in touch with is Wax Museum podcast, as I always do, because he talked to this, you know, a lot better than I did specifically on who you can sort of trust in the hobby and where are we going to go if we can't know, if we can no longer go to these, you know, platforms that gave us the information because you can't trust what's being presented to you anymore. He talks to that really well. I won't go through all these points. It's a seven minute video, so please check it out. But it's a pretty, you know, dodgy thing in my opinion. Either it's intentional on Blowout's part or it's just accidental. It's how it's being perceived. You know, we as collectors, we as, you know, market participants need to have opportunities to discuss things, right? We need to have opportunities to push back on things. There's a difference between hating and being hateful and negative and, and, and being spiteful and all those kinds of things. But if you're, you know, calling out somebody that calls themselves an investor, you should be allowed to hold that individual accountable. So it's just odd what appears to be getting deleted when they're also letting other things slide. So check out my video if you haven't seen it. Check out Kyle's from Maximizium Podcast if you haven't seen it either. I think it's a, a really good one. So, you know, please let me know your thoughts once you do. Now, the next thing I want to talk to is a video I put out yesterday, this one over here regarding serial numbered cards. I think this, if you haven't seen it, is going to be one of the more important videos for you to watch if you are a collector investor because it goes through you know, the true volume of some of these serial numbers that you might think are rare, but in reality, the print runs of these is insane. The number of parallels is also insane. And you need to be keeping that front of mind when you're trying to make a big purchase. You know, one of the things I didn't allude to enough in that video um, was more around how the trend over the hobby has been to chase these kinds of things. And you go to card shows and you see it at card shows, you watch card show vlogs, you see it on those, you look on IG, you see content creators talking about it. It's just a weird thing that you sort of need to be very careful of because whilst, yes, you do want to be chasing serial numbered cards because they are freaking cool, you need to be very selective with what you're going about doing and you can't simply think, okay, well, this card's out of, you know, 99 until LeBron James from 2021. I'm safe holding that card long term because it's out of 99. It's going to be rare. Listen to the video if you haven't seen it already because um, it'll click for you really quickly that you can't have that mindset or if you do want to have that mindset, you can't be pay, you know, paying a premium for that out of 99. You need to be very careful with what it is that you're buying. I give some examples on being more selective and more targeted with the cards you want to add to your PC or even cards you want to add to your you know, investment portfolio, if that's what you want to call it. I always find it really odd talking about cards from an investment perspective. I find it you know, really difficult to justify some of the prices these cards sell for. They're just pieces of cardboard in my mind. It just doesn't make sense to me at all. But if you're somebody that wants to do that, check out this video and sort of understand this concept because it'll help you a lot in the future when you're trying to, you know, spend big money on some of these things because these cards, firstly, aren't as rare as what you think they are. And, you know, over the course of a player's career, you're going to quickly run into a huge overprinting problem like we're seeing with LeBron as the case study in that video. You know, you need to be more targeted. You need to start buying cards that actually have a deeper meaning. Game use, you know, gear within them. Game use mem, I should say, on card autos. You know, maybe it's from a, a low print run set like soccer. If you look at that, Flawless was only released for one year. That would be a good set to try and chase if you are a soccer fan, right? Because they only get it for one year, all on card autos, all game use stuff. That's what I'm trying to do myself because I, I love, you know, Flawless Soccer. It's probably my favorite set of all time. But it's also, you know, maybe chasing, you know, images of a player that has a specific jersey. Maybe it's the only jersey they've ever been photographed on a card wearing. 
all little things like that, all the things that collectors get excited about are the things, in my opinion, you should be targeting. Now, one thing I also didn't touch on in that video is that it, it's really cool right now because we as collectors have so much choice when it comes to buying these, right? Because there are so many different parallels, so we can sort of go out and, and, and buy ones that sort of suit, you know, what our PC looks like or just gives us more choice and more opportunity to buy them, which I think is a cool thing. The only downside is there's no longer any scarcity associated with any of these cards, right? They're just printed to death and they're adding more product every single year, adding more parallels. So please check out that video because um, there's a lot we talk to and I think it's a really important one like I touched on for you to sort of understand and get your head around if you want to be, you know, a collector or an investor in this space long term. Modern, modern day cards are so freaking weird, so overprinted, which I know is a common sense thing to say, but you know, so many people don't look at it from the perspective as what I talked about in this video and it needs to be kept front of mind, right? So many people in the hobby are not talking about it and it's something that should be kept front of mind because you're, you're basically burning your own money if you're not paying attention to that, in my opinion. So the next thing we want to talk to is actually a pretty funny one and this is going back to our man, everybody's favorite hobby lawyer, Paul Lesko. We're going to talk through yet another lawsuit. This time it's Panini versus, yes, if you didn't know already, the Bang Bros. Now, I'm sure most of you guys uh, know who that is. If you don't, maybe don't Google it, to be honest. But essentially what has occurred is they've started to produce, as in Bang Bros have started to produce some cards, and that's a name I never thought I'd say on this channel, so I do apologize, but have started to produce cards that clearly infringe on Panini's copyright, right? They're basically printing immaculate cards and prism cards and things like that. And we've had a bit of an update on this. I was waiting for something to sort of come to light, but it looks like Panini have now identified who the actual manufacturer is. So they're no longer suing Bang Bros, they're now suing this individual. Now to give you some context, these are the cards in question here. So please let me know down in the comments below who your favorite lady is on there. But you can sort of see it is an immaculate card. This is a one of one, pretty cool one of one. Are the autos even legit? That's another question that people are asking. I myself don't know who any of these people are. Um, you can call me a liar all you want, but I'm not gonna indict myself on that one. But you can sort of see here, we've also got Prism down here with um, someone named Lana Rhodes. Got no idea who that is, guys. Um, and then a few more cards, which is pretty interesting, right? So the outcome for this, I think, looks pretty black and white. I just thought I'd raise that because it's a pretty funny one how somebody could go ahead and try and print things like this so egregiously and think they'd get away with it. Now, obviously, like when you talk to people, I shouldn't say, when you're talking to people that are, you know, um, lawyers and things like that, they're talking to the fact that, you know, nothing is set in stone with this kind of thing. You could sort of see here, we've got two updates with it. Basically, they're now suing the individual who's producing the cards. Like... It's going to be pretty interesting if, if you know, the law basically states that these guys did nothing wrong, because what does that mean then, you know, for the rest of the hobby? But I think it's pretty black or white, but I just thought that was a pretty funny one to talk to. Like I said, let me know if you know any any of those people, because I've got no freaking idea who they are. I don't even know what Bang Bros is. Do they, are they like baseballers? Do they hit home runs and things like that? I'm not entirely sure. So please let me know how close I was on that down in the comments below. Now... The next thing I want to talk to is actually a pretty interesting thing that I'm probably going to do a video on next week. And this has got to do with Sports Card Investor, but not specifically related to him. It's related to people that seem to have had, you know, a shift in mindset like he has. Now, what I've noticed over the last few months, particularly on his, you know, podcast, is he's now talking to being passionate about vintage cards, being more focused on vintage cards, but also being more targeted with the modern cards that he's buying, right? He's not just chasing prospects. He's not just chasing things that are overproduced similar to what we touched on with those serial numbered cards. He wants to target things that have a little bit more meaning. And there's a really cool interview that he did over here with, I believe the, the guy's name was Marshall Fogel. I'm not sure who he is. So again, apologies for my ignorance. But they talked through a really cool process around all the cool stuff that this guy owns, all the cool cards, tickets, you know, game use memorabilia, and why he goes about to collect those. And if you are a collector, you're going to really enjoy this because you'll probably find yourself, you know, nodding along the whole time because you're like, yeah, I approach my PC the same way. I want to buy things that have, you know, a deeper meaning. The, the general gist of what I'm trying to get to here and what the purpose of the video is going to be is, you know, how much of this was genuine inexperience from them versus how much of it was, you know, intentional manipulation. And I'm not just pointing the finger at Jeff here. I think this goes to maybe 15, 20 other people. I think at least on Jeff's specific instance, he was just an inexperienced dude that got a platformer and people you know, started to listen to him. I'm not trying to wash, you know, his hands clean of some of the mistakes he made, but we'll talk to this a little bit more. But I think this discussion goes to a lot more people than just Jeff is what I'm trying to get at. And when I say, you know, genuine inexperience, i.e. these people came in and started, you know, buying, you know, modern cards and telling you to also buy modern cards, which is why we saw, you know, base cards start to sell for like a thousand bucks, when in reality, that shouldn't have ever occurred, right? Um, so how much of that was them telling you to do that because they themselves didn't know any better? versus them having, you know, some kind of ulterior motive, you know, interest through sponsorships to push 
modern cards onto people to push the prices up when in reality they they knew that you shouldn't be buying those things you should go ahead and buy you know actually rare and scarce things game use memorabilia game use cards on card autos rare and vintage sets all that kind of thing i think it's pretty clear with a fair few of these people that you know a lot of them did this intentionally they clearly manipulated things to you as a viewer to get things where they wanted so if you want me to talk to this in another video i'm very happy to do that so please let me know down in the comments below let me know who you think might be um you know right up this alley in terms of somebody that you think should be called out on this thing you know again i don't want to talk to jeff into too much detail but if you look at the purchases at mind cycle cards you know flag i think it's pretty clear that jeff has spent a lot of money in the wrong places so might be a bit hard to say he's somebody that manipulated this in my opinion he's very clearly made a lot of really dumb inexperienced mistakes so i think he was being genuine with his approach but we'll talk to this in a little bit more in that video so push me in the direction you want me to go let me, let me know down in the comments where you want me to go with this as well and then we'll go from there i just thought it was a pretty interesting thing to talk to we've sort of touched on this a bit in the past as well with you know people manipulating markets and trying to shill bid and and trying to pump things up but i'm gonna go a bit deeper onto some of the messaging and how much of these things that these guys actually know about already so again please let me know now the last thing i want to touch on is probably um an interesting one it is um sports card radio versus sports card nonsense that i'll put on screen right now a bit more hobby beef that we talk to every now and then i think it's pretty funny to be honest so essentially sports card nonsense dunked on sports card radio called them hypocrites um specifically around having golden on despite having shit on golden for many many months um, it's a pretty interesting situation. I think there's a little bit more to come on this. Basically, Sports Card Radio dunked back onto Sports Card Nonsense and said, well, guys, we always said we would be buying on, on gold and we were incredibly transparent with where we we're spending our money. You guys were sponsored by Dibs. You were sponsored by Collectible. You were sponsored by all these other businesses that were new, that were startups. They took people's hard-earned money and basically withered away and gone bankrupt. So who's the bad guy here? The people that were you know, taking sponsorships and talking to these new businesses or us for telling you exactly what we were doing as we were doing it. So you can sort of see things from both sides in this situation. Really keen to get your thoughts on this. I know sports car radio keep getting hate for this whole Ken Golden situation. From my perspective, uh, they've told us from the get-go that it's just business from them. They say things for entertainment. They were pretty black and white when they, you know, decided to start buying on Golden. So you can take with that what you will. Same with the sports card nonsense guys. The one thing to their credit, even though they've copped a lot of heat in the past, is, you know, when stuff has gone wrong for some of these businesses, they've distanced themselves and dropped them as being a sponsor. Um, the thing from my perspective, though, that I've talked to many times on the channel, which I think Sports Card Radio rightfully flagged here, so many people in the hobby are so quick to take money that they're not stopping to ask the right question in the first place. We used... You know, Merger Sports as the clear example of this many times where he spoke about Mark's cards and why he was such a fantastic, you know, family business and you as a customer should be using them. He's got no idea what he's talking about. He's just, you know, a 20 something year old kid that has no life experience. It's got no work experience in, in the real world apart from working in his dad's donut shop. And that's not meant to diss on the guy, but it's more so meant to be, just be careful who you're listening to because you don't know who the person is on the camera. You don't know what they've done in life. You don't know what their ulterior motives are. So when you've got people either intentionally telling you to use certain things or getting money thrown at them and the money's too good for them to ignore because they've got nothing else. So they take the money and run and start saying things. You need to take the things that are being said with a grain of salt is the gist of what I'm saying. You've got those situations where I just touched on inexperience, don't know any better, doing things nefariously. You don't know who these people are. Take the things they're saying with a grain of salt because they don't care about you for the most part. And that's a really poor thing to say. And maybe some of them do care, but you as a viewer, you as a person need to take that mindset that they do not care about you because otherwise you're going to listen to your favorite person spend money somewhere and then end up like the whole marks card situation or end up like dibs or, or collectible it's just you know a complete shit show so to be very you know switched on when people are telling you to use something as we've talked to you before i'm probably rambling now but it is what it is i hope you i'm clicking the random crap i do apologize hope you liked the video today please let, let me know your thoughts on anything we discussed and i will see you you know in the next one cheers